Now let's take an example wherein we would like to show some data which is collection data into the UI. In the previous example, we talked about showing single object into the UI. So let's have a demonstration for the same now. So in the same example now, wherein we are holding employee class as a data holder structure, in the home controller, I defined one single object which returns my view along with the data. So now I'm going to define one collection here which will hold the data for us. A very simple collection of type list I'm going to go and create now. List of EMP, let's name it as employees equal to new list of employees. And let's try to add a couple of employees into it. So first part, employee one, two, three, Suppose we have got four employees over here. So 10, 11, 12, and 30. These are the numbers. And just to have some different values, ABC 1, 2, 3, 4 are their names right now. And here also in address, we'll specify Pune 1, 2, 3, 4 as their sample values. And then here, instead of returning only single object, I would like to return now EMPS, which is collection itself. So which means I'm asking now, MVC to show me collection data into the UI. So as you may be curious, like how, what will I change in my view now? So the first thing I'll change is this data for this page is not of single employee type. It's a collection of employees. But then again, if you put a list over here, it would be too hard coded because list, stack, queue, kind of like or array list, these all can be a parameter. So if you see list or any collection, normal collection that you and me have used, actually comes from one base called as i enumerable. So I'm going to use i enumerable of type t in here in the code. So I'll specify i enumerable of what type? So i enumerable of type emp, which means now since I said not list, since I said i enumerable, you'll find out here I can pass literally anything. So whether it's a list, stack or queue, it doesn't matter because each of these classes are of type i enumerable. But then when I obviously, when I change that model, the intelligence tells you that model itself is i enumerable if you can see in the intelligence. So then how do I go and represent all my data? So I'm going to remove this now. How do I show all the data then? So obviously a simple server side code like for or for each loop will help us. But what do I do with the for? I would like to represent all the data in the grid like format. So remember how we used to do this in case of ASP.NET. We all used to take the collection, simply drag and drop the data grid and then simply say grid.data source equal to that collection and grid.data bind. That's it. Hardly two lines of code, one drag and drop action and then creation of a collection was a job to do. But however, in MVC, it's a little bit more painful than ASP.NET. Because first thing, we will not have a grid here. Second thing, whatever UI that you have to create, you have to write it down. Means, if I want a table, I have to write down the tag called as table, not the grid. Inside the table, if I want a border, I myself will have to add that. If you wish to have so-called, you can say, a, a row which is along with the T head content. So maybe I'll specify TR only here. Let me say control Z and I'll add a TH into it. Which means if you want a header, it's your job. You specify I want number first. You specify I want name after that. And you specify I want address afterwards. But where is data? Where are the rules? Am I going to want hard code each of the row? Definitely not. What if there are 1 lakh rules? So can't we write, go on, write down a kind of a for each loop over here? Remember what I said, that is final output is HTML. But then who is going to go and generate the HTML? We are going to go and do that job. And how do you write down server side code? Using percent bracket. So I'm going to go and write down simple for each wala code. So in some for each code, if I have to put up, for each and every what? Because model is i enumerable right now. 
So if I say model is I enumerable, I will specify model here. But model is of what type? So if I carry a cursor on where, you can check that where automatically becomes uh, or item becomes of type where, which is in turn EMP type object. But then maybe within these brackets, I will get item dot number and everything else. But we don't want that in directly. We want it to go inside a TR. So here is what you do then. You have to write down TR in the iteration, but you can't write down directly because TR is client side. So then a trick which we used to play in classic ASP. You complete this tag first. You complete this tag. And in between that tag, you write down now TR. And we want TR, we want TD, again a TD, and again a TD. But the problem is again, we won't be able to get now item dot reason item is a server side code. So then what else we require again? We have to go and write down equal to item dot, which means you have to keep on writing the code, which is more of a spaghetti code. Wherein it's a mixture of HTML, it's a mixture of server side code. So you author this now and then now when you run the application, if you see, we'll have entire data displayed in the table form. Isn't it simple? And if you say right click and view source, you'll find out the page size contains no nonsense like the view state concept that we discussed. Had it been a grid view in ASP.NET, you can see easily that it's an extra data generated in case of ASP.NET. So the size for ASP.NET web page output versus size in MVC is very, you can say, uh, different. So in MVC, page size is less and in ASP.NET, page size is on a higher side also. So that's it in this session. In the next session, we are going to go and discuss that how exactly we can go and submit the data from this page to another page also.